this, it is, I think launching these rockets is a safety issue into the NAS. And I think it's, it's uh, a situation that, that requires the same level of safety management and safety culture that we're working to implement at Boeing. Needs to That's exactly what the head of the FAA, the aerospace regulator, just stated. According to them, Boeing is the safety standard that SpaceX needs to meet. Yeah, you heard that right. However, the performance of the two companies on the ISS tells a different story. In fact, SpaceX's Dragon is set to rescue two astronauts who were left stranded by Boeing's Starliner. Is this another FAA misstep? Let's dive deeper in today's episode of Great SpaceX. The controversy between the FAA and the rest will certainly not stop soon with the current situation. Recently, in a hearing, California Congressman Kevin Kiley directly questioned FAA Administrator Mike Whitaker. The FAA Administrator repeatedly mentioned safety issues and said that was the reason they punished SpaceX's Falcon as well as the delayed Starship. Mike said, well, I think safety is in the public interest and that's our primary focus. Uh, it's the only tool we have to uh, get compliance on safety matters. Interestingly, in this hearing, Mike Whitaker pointed out many unclear items that he said were SpaceX's violations. SpaceX then sent a letter to Kevin Kiley to point out the FAA administrator's wrong arguments. This shows that the FAA is not working effectively from its leadership position. But what I think caused the most controversy in Mike Whitaker's statement is probably the opinion related to Boeing, which I showed at the beginning of the video. As he said, SpaceX has not ensured operational safety, including the problems with Starship and some recent problems with Falcon 9. But that is clearly absurd. With Starship, the rocket is still in development, so problems are inevitable. Problems are inevitable. If the FAA's argument applied to the entire industry, perhaps companies in the future would be extremely hesitant to develop rockets. With Falcon 9, its problems do not affect public safety and do not affect the flight target. Regarding the Flight 5 delay, the FAA said, I think the two-month delay is necessary to comply with the, the launch requirements, and I think that's an important part of safety culture. And it is ridiculous that the FAA chose Boeing's culture as a standard for safety. Boeing needs to also exist with commercial space. Boeing was indeed a giant in the past, but entering this century, this company gradually declined. In the aviation industry, Boeing sometimes had major failures, resulting in many losses of life. Other failures have usually happened. On the aerospace side, Starliner has certainly been the industry's focus this year. After years of delays due to problems, it launched its CFT-1 mission in June. But when it launched and docked on the ISS, this spacecraft showed many problems like helium leaks, thruster failures, and more, thereby delaying its return schedule, causing chaos on the ISS, and eventually returning without astronauts. Currently, NASA and Boeing are still struggling to analyze these Starliner problems and have not provided any further updates. The next scheduled flight, Starliner 1, was pushed back to the end of next year. But this could be delayed further if the problem is not disclosed and Boeing is not granted a launch certificate. That could lead to Boeing not being able to fulfill the NASA contract. I wonder if these are the standards that the FAA mentioned. It's a shame. At least this time, Boeing doesn't deserve to be in that position. And by comparison, SpaceX is clearly showing that they operate much more safely and efficiently than Boeing. With the Falcon rocket, before some recent minor issues, SpaceX has been operating for nearly a decade without any problems. Among them, the Falcon Heavy has maintained a 100% success rate since its launch. Regarding the ISS, Dragon is also participating in NASA's supply program with Starliner. But in contrast to the poor performance of Boeing's spacecraft, Dragon is currently reaching many achievements, with nine flights for NASA, including a test mission. In addition, they also carry out many other private missions. In the next few days, Crew-9 will be launched to rescue the two astronauts left behind by Starliner. At the time of this video, Falcon 9 and Dragon in this mission just completed the static fire test. The two astronauts, Nick Haig and Alexander Gorbanov, moved to the launch pad, and then... SpaceX completed the full rehearsal test with these two astronauts inside Dragon. More importantly, mentioning safety, we can see that Dragon is also absolutely successful. Even with an unprecedented mission like the Polaris Dawn spacewalk, Dragon had also performed excellently. It can be said that just with these comparisons, we can see that SpaceX is much safer than Boeing. That is why the FAA administrator's statement received a strong reaction from Elon Musk. He reposted the hearing along with a message 
message about Mike Whitaker. He needs to resign. Obviously, the more arguments, the more we see that the FAA is trying to slow down SpaceX to favor other companies. The Starship delay is clearly beneficial to ULA and Blue Origin after these companies were delayed due to their own problems. And now when it comes to Boeing, perhaps this company is also being favored by the FAA. There is no intervention when that spacecraft operates and returns with many problems. But perhaps they have not realized that their regulations are also creating opportunities for other countries, especially China, to catch up, even surpass the US. Recently, a statistic on the launch results of the first quarter once again showed the dominance of SpaceX. They launched 429,125 tons, while China ranked second with only 29,426 tons, meaning SpaceX launched 14 times more than the competitor behind them. Regarding Flight 5, SpaceX recently posted preparation images accompanied by the message, SpaceX engineers have spent years preparing and months testing for the booster catch attempt on Flight 5, with technicians pouring tens of thousands of hours into building the infrastructure to maximize our chances for success. SpaceX's role is extremely important. Obviously, without SpaceX, we would really be surpassed by China in many aspects. So sad if we lost that advantage, even the leading position due to problems from within the country. What do you think about the FAA administrator's statements? Should Mike and his agency be kicked out of the aerospace industry? Respond yes in the comment section if you agree. Then, be sure to like, share the video, and subscribe to our channel to continue following SpaceX's development journey. Despite facing many challenges, SpaceX continues to make impressive strides with its Falcon 9 rocket. At 12.01 a.m. EDT on September 24th, a Falcon 9 lifted off from SLC-4E in California, marking the 64th Starlink mission of the year. The booster for this mission, B-1081, successfully landed on the Of Course I Still Love You or OCISLY drone ship, completing its 10th mission. This landing was the 103rd for Asosly, and the 351st overall for SpaceX boosters. B-1081 had previously supported several notable missions, including two to the International Space Station, with Crew-7 and CRS-29, two climate monitoring satellites for NASA's PACE and ESA's EarthCare, and the Transporter-10 rideshare mission. More significantly, with this mission, SpaceX achieved its 92nd launch of the year, officially surpassing the previous record set last year. When combined with one Falcon Heavy mission and two Starship missions, SpaceX has now completed 95 missions in 2024. Looking ahead, SpaceX has even more milestones to conquer. They are just three launches away from matching last year's total of 98 launches and need two more beyond that to hit 100 launches for the year. Falcon 9 alone is eight missions away from its own 100th launch. With a goal of 148 launches for the year and over three months left to achieve it, SpaceX remains well on track. Records are breaking continuously despite the obstacles. The launch schedule is growing tighter as the year comes to a close, so stay tuned to follow SpaceX's upcoming milestones. Alongside SpaceX, Firefly Aerospace has also made significant strides this year, recently securing an important launch contract. NASA awarded Firefly, a Texas-based company, a contract on behalf of the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, or NOAA, through the Venture Class Acquisition of Dedicated and Rideshare, or Vader Launch Services. Vader Launch Services Program. Vader allows NASA to offer fixed price contracts for satellite launches. Under this contract, Firefly will launch QuickSounder, a prototype for NOAA's next generation environmental satellites in low Earth orbit. Although the value of the award was not disclosed, the Vader program offers a maximum total value of $300 million across all contracts during its five-year ordering period, according to the NOAA webpage. QuickSounder is part of NOAA's Near Earth Orbit Network, or NEON, a new generation of polar orbiting weather satellites. Its mission is to collect critical weather data for several organizations, including the National Weather Service. As stated on the NOAA webpage, the QuickSounder mission will support NOAA's next-generation satellite architecture for its future low-Earth orbit program, which will provide mission-critical data for the agency's National Weather Service, the nation's weather industry, and other users worldwide. The launch is currently scheduled for no earlier than February of 2026. NOAA, in collaboration with NASA, is focusing on speeding up the development of small to medium-sized satellites to enhance weather forecasting, disaster management, and climate monitoring. NASA will handle the development and launch of these satellites, 
while NOAA will provide funding, technical requirements, and manage post-launch operations. This contract marks a valuable achievement for Firefly, offering an opportunity to establish greater credibility in the aerospace industry. Historically, NOAA has relied on highly dependable companies like SpaceX for its satellite launches, making this both an opportunity and a challenge for Firefly. It will be interesting to see how they manage this significant responsibility. Well, folks, that's about it for today's episode. Thank you so much for tuning in. And as always, this has been Kevin from Great SpaceX. Until next time, keep looking up.